Welcome to Adventure, an e-commerce podcast that isn't just about numbers and profits. Uh, it's about the visionaries who have carved their path, navigated challenges, um, and left an indelible mark on the e-commerce landscape. Um, joining us today is Nick Penev. Uh, Nick co-founded Extreme Power Brands in 2010, a private label supplements development company where he and his co-founders uh, developed and launched 20 plus private label supplement brands across Europe. Um, exited all of those brands in 2020, rebranded Extreme Power Brands uh, into a partnership as a service agency and network for e-commerce service providers, which is how Nick and I met. Um, and Nick also recently co-founded Scale uh, in January of 2023, uh, a SaaS tool for proactive introductions and referral swaps. And I can tell you, Nick, that was much needed. Um, one of the few, you know, kind of out there, um, and we could get into that later. And also joining us is uh, Joe Phillips, account manager with Bidex. Um, Joe has a passion for all things e-commerce, and at Bidex he handles ad strategy for enterprise clients in the United States. So welcome both Nick and Joe. I know Nick that we talked about having you tell us your story, um, and you said that could be a six hour long podcast. So um, <laughs> I am though interested in how you really sort of entered the e-commerce ecosystem. And then briefly, if you could talk about um, like your starting of scale, how you developed the idea, how you launched it, and then we'll get into challenges and stuff later. Okay, so thank you, Janet, for inviting me. Thank you, Joe. We had a webinar with you, it got canceled in the summer. I'm not sure what exactly happened. I think two of the guys pulled off because of summer, that's why. I I don't do too much in the summer, but finally we're here. So thanks again for the invite. And I'm going to give like the short story of how I, how I ended up here. I know I was, uh, I've been in sales since kindergarten. You know, when as a kid, I was a genius painter. You know, I was going to the university and actually I was painting with the college students. And there was like a, a gallery, which was about to show my paintings. They didn't do that. So I gave up painting and I turned to uh, actually selling and I was actually selling like paintings to the kids in school but back then it was at the end of the 80s so uh, my parents got called to school and they said okay your guy your son you know he's doing capitalist bullshit because he's selling pictures to the other kids I had like a full jar of pennies and this was my first business which got shut down but uh, I guess I've been always like that in high school I was ordering like stuff from Amazon credit cards were very rare in Bulgaria but one of my friends father who was a rich rich guy so he had a credit card so we're ordering stuff from amazon amazon was shipping that to bulgaria and because nobody can, could buy like expensive like like nikes like adidas like shoes we're selling them on like three times what we used to purchase them so that was my first touch with e-commerce but that was almost 20 years ago you know you know so, in the states we would have called you a hustler nick yeah i, I think i think people call it hustler but it was nothing illegal i mean mm -hmm. we just you're kind of just ordering stuff that people couldn't find. So simple supply and demand. Now, for example, Amazon, it was popular for like CDs, like books. For example, my first order on Amazon ever was Matrix, the soundtrack. I ordered that because I saw it on the first page and I was listening to the soundtrack and everybody was telling me, okay, I mean, this is a great, this, these were great songs. And one guy told me, Nick, by the way, I know that there is a movie called The Matrix. So I hit the soundtrack and I had no idea that there is a movie, but, uh, Long story short, you know, eventually I finished high school. I went to the States. A funny thing, you know, my first day in America in, in, in school was September 11th. Wow. So, so, so actually I arrived a week earlier. I have pictures with the Twin Towers. My first day in school in California was September 11th. I went to school and we watched the Twin Towers collapse on TV. So oh. that was my first day Good. in school. But, but, you know, actually this was very big. But one, one of the things that I noticed that how unites were the people after them the terrorist attack so that, that's what i remember you know I, I lived with the family there like a house family then I, I got like a scholarship i went to university and thankfully i didn't finish my education because my girlfriend back then uh she, she wanted to come she got her visa refused so i just i just came back to europe without telling my parents and i spent a few months in france you know but oh. actually it's a good decision because you can see we're, we're married right now so it was a good good call so I guess I'm, I'm kind of a risky guy. I'm always action first, think later, but 
I, I think you know people should be more like that. I mean, because some people think too much, don't just take their chances. And I'm gonna fast forward then. So after we saved out, you know, I started actually working for a sales company in in US US sales company in Bulgaria. We're doing a lot of sales. I was making probably 20 times that like the minimum uh like silver in Bulgaria because it was only commission based. My mother is a doctor, my father is a the head engineer who built the airport in Bulgaria, and I was making more than them when I was in my 20s because it was pure sales commission job. So then I realized that sales marketing that that's my that's my thing you know but the all good things come to an end and even though i was like the top sales guy in the in the company for like five years from over 500 sales guys us and europe they closed the company the company got acquired and they said okay we don't want to have an office in bulgaria so ideas guys that's it and i got used to making a lot of money my girlfriend it was already a wife you know she she was pregnant I got into a car accident in a matter of a week at the same crossroad. That are the only times in my life that I ever been in a car accident. So it was like the worst period in my time. Oh my Going God. from doing like 5K to doing nothing. Mm -hmm. My wife is pregnant. I don't I don't know what to do. And usually you know, in life, you know, sometimes you get lucky. So what happened? I started working for a company which was doing affiliate marketing in Bulgaria. And the, the other thing is you no. Know, I, when I went there, you know, it was the worst period for the company. So they didn't do any sales and they didn't do nothing. But what I saw is that those guys are actually selling or, or I should say uh, marketing, like selling physical products on global markets. And then I came across a product called Acai Berry. I'm sure you've heard of it all. This is the magic Brazilian fruit. And I said, OK, you know what? I'm going to do, do that myself. So I quit what they did. And actually, I became their competitor. You know, I, I called my best man from the wedding. I told, I told him, Lucky, his name is Lucky. Hey, man, let's do that. I don't want to do that, man. It's too risky. And I said, OK, man, if I prove to you that we are going to make it, now, are you going to do a website? Because he was a tech guy. I was the sales and marketing. So I told him, OK, build me a website. I'm going to source some products from the UK, some just whatever type of Akai Berry product, and we're going to sell them. We, we ordered them for like 10 euro each like 200 units we sold them for 50 euro and i saw all long guys okay so do you believe right now and then we started you no know, my wife was pregnant she was actually taking orders from the phone when we at the doctor for appointment so this is how we start the you know, like okay. eating orders then we start from bulgaria then we spread across the whole european union and that was the the good thing back then is it was very early we're one of the few companies selling supplements in europe mm -hmm. one of the few companies doing facebook ads and well, just you, know, to let you, you you make it sound so easy. We hear all of these. No, stories. no, 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 no. Actually, I'm gonna go to the, all the mistakes that I've made. So, <laughs> I I got lucky because I got the idea, but it's not only work because uh, people are not. Uh, to be honest, I mean the fir the first person that I went to to offer him to be a partner because see, I don't know anything about building websites. I'm not a tech guy. No, I'm sales, marketing, this kind of stuff. So I went to my old boss in the sales company, the manager, and told him, OK, man, here is my idea. It works. Nobody's doing that. Let's do it. And he said, OK, man, I'm not sure you know, what if it doesn't work out. I said, OK, man, whatever. So then I had, I had to actually convince the co-founders to actually do it with me because I needed some money. You know, you know, I put like 2K, and I had like two other guys who jumped in. But they had to actually convince those guys that it's going to work. Because And this is actually an issue that they see with anybody who is trying to start something. People are scared that they're going to fail. Sure. I mean, of course, everybody fails. Everybody has a different risk tolerance, and yours seems and, to be quite high. <laughs> no, no, actually, it's not risk. I mean, see, I didn't get any like debt. I didn't have any funding for anybody. You just, you're just risking you know, a certain amount of money, which was not too much. I mean, like I thought it was 2K, 2,000 US dollars per person. Which is which is nothing. I mean, even right. back then it was nothing. But but people are just scared that it's gonna fail. And this is what I told them. Okay, I mean, of course you can fail, but if you don't try, you're gonna fail 100. percent That okay. that's how it is with everything. So eventually, no, we we start selling across the whole European Union. We start selling uh, 20 products, and we're just in. It, it was done so quickly. We we never do did any brand register, which of course I don't recommend anybody to that. But we're the our timeline from sourcing from product design like product idea 
to start to selling the product, it was three weeks. Wow. Our, our money, manufacturer were in Europe, in UK. So we never sourced from China. Wow. Our profit margin was so huge. We're selling, buying for like two units per, for like per, for supplement. We're selling that for 50 euros. So we, we had to act quickly. You no, know, we used to do like new product every year. You know, we're constantly testing and doing this stuff. And eventually we sold like half a million units in a matter of 10 years. It, uh, at the peak, we're doing like over 10 million. And this is actually when I started going into into partnerships because paid marketing is great, but you know the cost of paid marketing is increasing all the time. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of paid marketing going down anywhere. And, <laughs> and, and eventually, what happened? Now we're spending like millions on Facebook and Google Ads because and but supplements are a shady business. Now you get you get suspended. You have issues with that. So eventually, now they suspended all our account. I talked with their our. Uh, manager at Facebook and I told him, okay, man, what should we do? Okay, you need to change this, this, and that for this product. So we changed the products, we changed the landing page, we changed everything. Mm -hmm. Three weeks later, we got suspended again. And I said, okay, man, we're not going to go anywhere with that. You know, we need a new sales channel. And then I said, okay, let's do partnerships in affiliates. And I actually started building a partnership network so we don't rely um, on like two single sources of like uh, revenue, you know, because we're just too dependent of those guys. So actually, this is how I started doing partnerships. I got a, like a huge network of over a thousand affiliates and partners, and we started to just and they started running our offers, and we made the most money for partnerships. But the risk was not on us; the risk was on the partners because we only paid them on for conversions, and. And 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 after I mean, if you guys if you can actually ask me if you have some questions, I can go forever. You know, we can go <laughs> so to ask me some questions, so I can change direction, slow down, speed well, up. <laughs> I was waiting for you to take a breath, Nick, so we could jump in. I I personally find it fascinating. I I know that you had a lot of challenges, I'm sure, and it wasn't as easy as what you're describing. Um, it it kind of sounds like one of those reels that you see on Instagram where people are like, you know, I made, you know, 5 million out of my college dorm selling on Amazon. It, 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 it was exactly like that. But the, the one key thing that I mentioned in, in the beginning were early were the first ones. So we exited everything, but we exited because it was getting harder and harder. So what we did at the beginning, you cannot do it right now. You cannot no. just, because we didn't do anything. We didn't, we did we did not know nothing you know there was no service providers like you guys were paying 10 percent on top of our ad spend to our agency i'm not sure how much you charge your guys right now but 10 percent is a lot I mean, mm -hmm. because we did we didn't know anything you know uh, so we had a lot of issues so you outsourced all of that you basically sourced it and you came up with the products and then outsourced all of the the sort of management of it then I mean, yeah, partially, not everything. You know, we always had a mix, but it was all for Facebook and Google, and that's what that's why I realized that we're too dependent on those companies. And I mean, it definitely, you, your personality definitely lends itself to this arena. I mean, clearly, you have that business mindset. Um, I don't know that you say, oh, you know, when you started selling uh, shoes or whatever it was uh you know oh it's just a simple you know supply and demand and that's true as adults we know that being in the business world but i don't know that every middle schooler or high schooler has that same sort of just sense about them so i think it's just innate in you um and clearly you've used that to your advantage in creating power brands and extreme power brands and scale um joe i'm gonna let you jump in do you have anything you need to you'd like to ask nick yeah so I know that at first you were going into supplements and then since then you've launched scale and um, it seems to be a little bit of a trend where a lot of Amazon sellers after they exit or are really successful with it, go into the software world. Um, I was just kind of wondering on, on your take on what's different, what you like better and anything else related to it. Yeah, I mean, actually, I got lucky with my other business after the supplements. And also, let me tell you the story about that. So, uh, I was I was actually a client of Helotax. Jeanette uh, uh, knows the company. We're partners there. So, I was using the company to dust my VAT components across Europe. So, it's like the sales tax in the States. And the founders of Helotax are also ex 
e-commerce servers, to be exact, Amazon servers. I've never sold sold on Amazon, but they were still in the e-commerce space. So, and we get to know each other, and they told me, okay, Nick, because when when it changed the ownership, you know, they see that. So they told me, okay, Nick, you're selling the company. We know that you do a lot of partnerships and affiliates. Uh, we'll have an idea. Can you advise us how to grow Hello Tax or how to actually add the partnership is an additional channel to what we do? And I said, okay, of course, I'm going to do it for you guys. I'm too young to retire. My wife told me that I'm getting dumber if I don't focus on one project you now full time. Because at the end of the supplement business, I had my team run everything. So we actually jumped into the crypto space and trading. We lost a lot of money there. So that's another topic. But I was doing dumb stuff. So that's why I know you need to be focused on doing something. So I said, okay, guys, let's do that. I mean, I like the idea. And the first thing that I did is I checked the correspondence with their existing partners. And what I, and I saw a, a trend there. A lot of partners are complaining that the partnership is one sided. And I told them, okay, guys, you're doing that all wrong. Partnership is about giving, not getting. So we were going to start giving first. We're going to build a huge partner network with all the experts in the space. We're going to start doing stuff with them, like webinars, newsletters, events, anything that would be valuable to sellers because we offer one piece of the puzzle. Our partners offer everything else. And that's how I started actually building the partnership network for, for Hellotax. And then eventually, you know, a few partners of mine, you know, Janet knows them, James from Merchant Spring and John from Zongori, they told me, okay, Nick, can you advise us as well? Can you help us with partnerships? And I said, okay, guys, you just gave me an idea. I'm going to I'm going to step something which I'm going to call a partnership agency and the service is going to be called partnership is a service. So that's my second business after is that's actually before scale. That was like three years ago. So what I did is I set up an agency which helps service providers to grow for partnerships. And how does this work? You know, I, I've, I've met probably 1500 founders in the last three years. I've built a huge network. So what we do, we meet new partners. We connect them with partners in our space, which are clients or partners. We teach our clients how to monetize each partnership. And the goal of those meetings is not to sell your service to the other partner or vice versa. The idea is to build a relationship, do set of things like uh, like we do right now, like a podcast, webinar, blog swap, social swap. So you create your content. You use your partners to distribute the content and vice versa. So you guys are growing each other's company without spending any money. The only currency that you're using is time. And, and that's how partnerships work. And, yeah, well, thank you. and and we've helped over 40 companies in the last three years. We got three of our clients acquired in the meantime. And and that's how actually we got the idea about skill because we realized that the best way to grow a company or to actually grow your partner network or just sell your services by the by warm interactions because how, how can you actually connect with somebody? You have two options. Paid marketing, it doesn't work for B2B. Second option, outreach. It works, but is I mean, it cannot be compared to warm interactions or as I call them, practice referrals. Because let's say we, we meet with you guys. You know what BDX does, but probably 500 of my partners don't know about you guys. So by connecting you to my partners and telling them, hey, please meet our partners, BDX, they do PPC management. If they haven't heard of you and if they're not happy with their current provider, they're going to say, okay, let me check them out. Nick recommended them. And that's that's what we do. We kind of proactively introduce each other within the network so we help each other. And there is nothing commercial. Of course, if you like what we do, we can talk, you can become a client if you meet our criteria. But generally, the network is totally free. We connect people in the network, we do stuff together. And the only uh, thing that we're spending is time. So if you're willing to spend time and, and you're willing to do stuff, we're going to do what? If not, if nothing, nothing is going to happen. Actually, one of my partners told me a very, very good saying. You know, he, you might know him. The company is called Gamba. He, he's actually based in the States. So it doesn't matter. It's a Swedish uh, saying, you know, nothing comes out from doing nothing. So, so this is actually very, very important for partnership in any business. If you do nothing with your partners, nothing is going to come out of that. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, Nick, you were probably one of the first people I met um, when I started this journey as partner manager with BIDEX. And, you know, <clears throat> I think you know everybody on the planet because <laughs> everybody I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm seven, seven billions. Push, <laughs> but, 
but you know, that's um, all of the time and all of the energy that you've spent cultivating your network. That is your resource is your network. Um, and I, I'll be honest, I don't know anybody that does it as well as you as many, um, I guess you would consider yourself almost like a fractional partnership manager for all of these companies. Um, um, no, no, not, not exactly because, you know, only like a small portion of the partner network are paid plans. So most of those guys are, are free partners. But for example, to the partner told no clinic, do you know a manufacturer for supplements in the USA? No, I don't. Let me message my, my Slack group in, in the WhatsApp group and I'm going to find somebody. Like five minutes later, I hit a partner who knows that. So the, the issue with most people is that they don't want to do the extra effort to help out somebody because, okay, I'm not going to make money from this guy. Actually, that's totally wrong. I do stuff and help out people for free. People recommend me for my paid service all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's simple as that. You know, if, some, if you would like to gain something, you, you should start giving. Actually, there is a, another saying, you know, I'm not sure who said that, but nobody has gone broke from giving. So the issue is that most people would like to get only and usually they don't get anything. Yeah, a hundred percent. I agree with that philosophy. And, you know, and I try to, to move forward with that with all of the partners um, that I work with. Um, I think it's really important. Uh, so scale. So let's talk a little bit about scale. Um, you knew the value of this because you faced this challenge as a partner manager, right? Um, it's very time consuming. It's actually, actually exactly. It's, it's not exactly a challenge, but we realized long time ago that introduction swaps are the best way to generate business, meet partners, no, whatever. I mean, it doesn't matter. You might be uh, organizing an event, you need sponsors. Request some interactions, you get sponsors. So. You would like to sell your service to another partner, you request interaction. So we knew that for, for a long time since we started doing that, that this is the thing. But we realized that most people don't know how to do that. They're lazy or for whatever reason, they didn't do it. So we said, okay, man, let's build a software for that, which we're going to allow those guys to do proactive referrals. And, and our actually prototype was currently, because with currently, you meet somebody and tell them, okay, let's have a meeting. And before currently, it was nightmare to book a meeting with currently, just send your link and they book a meeting based on your available slots. So scale it exactly like that. You know, instead of wondering who you know, who is a good fit for us, I'm gonna sell, send you my scale page and I'm gonna tell, hey Jeanette, hey Joe, here is my list of partners. I have like 200 there, like my top one. Mm -hmm. Go there, check who I know and request an introduction. You can request, let's say 10 for, per month for free. For every interaction you request, I would like one back from it. So you're using your existing partners, or you can share your client list if you want to, to get new clients. And nobody's asking about the service of the partner, but I don't care about that. People don't know what they need. A lot of times they're not asking, but they know that if the, this guy works with the same ICP as you and they're not competitor, they're a good fit. So you can just go ahead and request those from you, vice versa. I don't know all the partners that you guys have. No, you say that I know everybody, but that's not true. I meet probably 30, 40 people per month that they've never met. So I'll send you my oh, scale page, Nick. <laughs> okay, no, I'm, I'm waiting for that. So, yeah. and and some people don't uh, actually uh, answer when you're trying to reach reach out to them on LinkedIn, for example, called outreach. So there is always people that you cannot meet. And that's, that's the good thing about scale because uh, you message somebody on LinkedIn. I have this service, I offer that. Then don't, don't reply. Then you go for scale, you request an introduction from the partner to this guy, and he's gonna reply because of warm introduction. So the, the magic about scale is that you're not outreaching, you're not doing call, call to outreach. A partner who knows the contact is making the interaction. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, Nick, you know, please meet, you no, know, Jeanette, she's doing this and that. I, I think that you guys can connect. So what we've been doing manually, we're doing that from scale. This is the one thing. The other thing that we're doing is we do actually scale, we call it scale matchmaking. We, whenever you're active users with contacts there, we turn on the matchmaking and, and we're actually connecting with other users. For example, hey, Jeanette, please meet. Here, this is Jeanette from BIDEX, this they're doing this and that. Here is Jeanette's page. Please meet Joseph. Joseph is from company B. He's working with Amazon servers. Feel free to do interaction. So, so we kind of connect one user with other user. We share the both the scale links of either party and we tell them, okay guys, do introduction swaps. So we're like matchmaking for B2B. 
we're doing that in e-commerce right now because this is where most of my network is, but that's, that's actually it's industry agnostic. And I'll tell you how you can use that. A company has 10 partners, for example. Uh, the 10 partners that you know, know at least 10 partners each. So the pool of those partners, let's say 100. You have 10 partners on your end. So you go to all these partners. Let's start with partner A. Okay, partner A, let's do some interaction swaps. Request some interactions from me. I'm going to do that for me. So they request interactions to 10 of your partners that you, you know, you request 10 on their end. So you use your 10 to eventually outreach 100 companies. You're going to get probably 50 meetings of those. You're going to end up with, like, say, 20 partners. And eventually you're going to start doing stuff, which is going to generate content, is going to generate leads and clients eventually. And, and this is just of it is that it's all automated. <clears throat> you know, I, yeah, I have to say it's, it's still pretty new, so I haven't used it um, to its full advantage yet. But you know, as beneficial as those warm intros are, it is very time consuming. Um, exactly, no, it's, it takes a lot of time. It mm -hmm. takes a lot of time. The other thing is we're building a lot of new features, but the idea is to be very simple. You know, you upload your contacts, you share them with your partner. Your partner makes a request, you approve the introduction, vice versa. So the we're not going to change that. We have different use cases. So let, let me ask you, for example, because I've asked a lot of companies recently, nobody knows anything about it. Uh, do you guys do loss leads recycling with partners? You'll have to say that a little slower. Just okay. Because okay. Well, are you guys recycling your loss leads? Opportunities which come to BDX and you guys don't convert? Because no company is converting all leads. No. You know what's that? Okay, so see, most companies don't do that. So let's assume you have your company, you're selling a product, and you have, let's say, thousand inquiries that you haven't converted in the last month or last three months. So those guys are probably in your email list, but you're not doing anything besides that, right? You probably do an outreach, etc. So we use the lost leads for scale to do lost lead swaps. Partner A is providing a service for Amazon sellers. Partner B is providing different service. They're not competitive. Both guys have, let's say, 100 loss leads. Sellers who inquired about their service but didn't convert. So what we do, hey, sell our name, please meet our partner. They're doing their agency, doing management for Amazon. If you guys are looking for an agency, feel free to get in touch. Then on your end, OK, please meet BIDX. They're doing a PPC management automation on there, feel free to get. So again, you're using your uh, loss leads to generate new leads. And as the there is one, one song from Macklemore, I think it was the guys, somebody's trash is somebody else treasure. I think that was the quote. So so that's what we're, but we're actually making up new use cases all the time. But that, are, that those were the main ones, like partners. So, you know, we try to pull a quote from every podcast so that I can add it to my newsletter, Nick. I, th I feel like we have found our quote. Uh, yeah, you, you should do that, you know. <laughs> That'll be the story. Um, I'm just going to interrupt for just a couple of uh, light questions. We try to, you know, not make it super dry and, and sales talky. But um, so I'm going to ask you, what is the uh, most recent thing that you've recommended to somebody? Could be anything. Yeah, the recent, I mean, I think this this is the manufacturing stuff from today. To be honest, every day somebody's asking me for something, you know. Uh, if you're asking for something funny, I can tell you because it could be a uh, book, a movie. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't don't hit, you know don't panic you know you know him from a crummy. I'm sure that um did they connect with him? Don't panic from a crummy. Uh, doesn't sound familiar. Okay, anyway, so connect you. So uh, he's a very cool guy, you know, and he told me oh, Nick, okay, I gotcha. A crummy, a crummy. Okay. So so he's into boating, you know, he's a yacht and all this kind of stuff, and he told me, okay, Nick. I, I'm, I'm, I want to go to Europe. I want to go and charter a boat and go to the Mediterranean. And I said, can you help out? I said, I mean, man, I, I hate boats, but uh, I know a friend who knows a friend. And I messaged one guy and he told me, like, if you, hey, Nick, you know, we find the charter, you know, thanks for the help. So uh, I found this, I helped this guy to find like a yacht in, in Europe. So just in your so, spare time, you helped him find a yacht? <laughs> yeah, actually, I do, I do it most. I mean, see, the thing is, I, I don't. See, this is the, the misconception with a lot of people. They think that it's it's some hard thing to do. I mean, it doesn't cost you anything to message a few guys that you know. Most people are not willing that. And actually, I have that's actually a, sale, a trick that they do. It's actually anti sales trick. People try to sell me some stuff, and I tell them, okay, let's have a meeting. I'm going to connect with somebody, can connect with somebody. Okay, no thanks. Okay. So 
what, what do you want then? I mean, you're not willing to do any effort and you would like to sell me. How can you do that? I mean, you're, you're not willing to do anything extra. Yeah, but, so, you know, it is that exchange. I have to say, you know, you, you're a very generous person. Um, there's not a lot of gatekeeping, you know, kind of in this industry. Um, but and you've introduced me to many, many uh, people that eventually became partners. Um, part of it is the trust. I think there's a lot of trust that goes involved that's involved in who you are as a person, especially as a partnership manager. Um, and being active and engaged with that partnership and not just taking, 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 and then, you know, kind of forgetting about the other half. But um, that's clearly who you are as a person. I think it comes into your philosophy um, as you lead in business. But that being said, um, I would, if you ever ask me for anything, Nick, um, you know, I would gladly um, do those things for you. And that's just part of, you know, nurturing that relationship, I think, which you're extremely uh, good at. So. Yeah, and I know that I know that, but usually I don't. I try not to ask for too many favors. I'm like that. Sure. <laughs> uh, the, the only thing I want is more free time, and I'm actually working on that. I mean, this summer I managed to cut my schedule a bit because I'm always trying to do like, uh, how how should I say it? I would like to do more and work less. I mean, like automate stuff. Do because uh, there is a period that when I was doing a lot of meetings. Right now. I have like a certain set of meetings. I have like, I only work like four days per week meetings only. And then I never do any exceptions. I mean, I'm actually, one of the things that I learned a long time ago is to say no. Mm -hmm. Because you know, people invite me to events. I was invited to AMZ Innovate. I was invited to a mastermind. I, I'm invited to all kinds of things. And I'm telling everybody, hey, thanks for the invite guys, but I'm gonna, I'm not gonna come in. You know? my, my time with my family, my kids is more, is more valuable. So. Uh, it's not nothing is going to change if we meet in person. Of course, I've done that a few times, but I always combine that with a vacation. So whenever some, something you know it doesn't work out for me, I, I never say okay, man. Hypocrisy is not something that I'm good at. I mean, I'm going to tell you no, I'm not going to do that. Or if I don't like something, I'm going to tell you vice versa. You know, but yeah, that that just me. You know, I guess. No, no, definitely balancing those scales, you know, for work life is super, super important. I, we, I think we're out of time. I have one more question for you. I could talk to you for another two hours. I'm very thankful that you uh, squeezed us in and, and put us on the yes list. But um, since we're called, <laughs> since we're called the Ad Adventure Podcast, um, I, I close every show with asking what is the most adventurous thing um, that you've done, do you think? Yeah, I probably know when when I came back from the states because you know my father told me you know if if you quit the school you know because I get scholarship you know never never come back and I said okay man I'm not gonna tell anybody so I came to Bulgaria I I convinced my wife to come with me to France I'm not sure why we went to France and don't know I don't speak French we spent <laughs> few few months there how can I find a job if I don't speak Spanish no anyways I, mean, I was twenty so twenty one or whatever so. It was it was a good uh, like experience, but probably the most adventurous way. And eventually came back to Bulgaria. I was I, I lived here a few months. I didn't tell my parents. I started working as a waiter, bartender. So it was my father was not happy, but I usually don't care you know, what think people think. You know, I'm usually like that. I mean, I have something I see. Uh, I don't care too much for other people's opinion, which is not good. Of course, I learned that the hard way eventually. But that's probably the most adventurous thing. You know, that is a very. Yeah, we've done other stuff, but it's not nothing dangerous. For example, I never plan anything, you know. We want to do something, you know, for example, every weekend we go on short vacations. I never plan my like trips in advance, even though sometimes I have to, you know, when you need to book a flight or whatever, but I don't like to plan too much in the future. I don't know why. I'm just like that. <laughs> I can just hear your wife in the background probably going like, oh my goodness. Nope. He doesn't no, no, no. She, 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 she's like me. She's like me as well. But <laughs> Not exactly like me, but she agrees with some of the stuff. I mean, she's she she likes more planning. You know, if you ask me, I I I'm gonna take the kids to actually that's my idea. You know, my wife doesn't agree with that, but I have an idea to actually travel the world and live in one country for like a month or two, and the and the kids need to be homeschooled. And what this a is the issue. Yeah, the wife, but my my wife doesn't agree. She says, no, what, what, what a life that would be. That would be an amazing adventure. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And let me let me tell you what's the idea. I don't believe in the regular education. I've been to like five schools, three universities. I didn't learn anything there. I met some people. So I think the way to learn is through experience. So 
what would be better you know if you travel though i know that from people that have done that you know mm -hmm. the experience is the way i mean i we spend money only on vacations i don't buy any expensive stuff i you know i'm, I'm dressed like a bum you know <laughs> So, but, but, so what, I, I think that, that that's what people should do, like memories, experience, you know, because see, expensive stuff, I mean, who cares? I mean, yeah, <laughs> that, that's, that's, of course, but but that's not good because if there is no expensive stuff, a lot of industry will go bust, I mean, like the luxury <laughs> stuff. So, so don't listen to me, guys. I mean, I'm just, that, I mean, it's not oh. true. I'll send I'll send you some bidex socks, uh, Nick. Yeah, so, do, do that. Bidex See, this is a, 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 a gift from a partner. So yeah. people send me <laughs> gifts all the time. So. That's lovely. Well, I just I want to thank you for being on the podcast. It was an absolute pleasure. I learned a ton of stuff from you. I think other people can as well. So please make sure that you connect uh, with Nick at um, Hello Tax or Extreme Power Brands or Scale any of his ventures and uh, stay tuned for more podcasts from adventure in the future. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Jeanette. And guys, remember, just take action. Don't think too much. <laughs> awesome quote. Thanks, Nick. Take care.